Let's bring Nate to the tank. Come on, let's go. Let's go, Nate. Come on, bring him in. Three more young men in this gathering. Come on in, bro. Water's warm, man. Water's warm. There's no power in this water, church, but the power is in the blood of the Lamb. And to speak of that, here's Nate's story. He says, I grew up in the church with godly parents who love the Lord. When I was young, I made a profession of faith, but I never truly gave my life to God. Going through the foundations and reading the word really for the first time, I realized I didn't have Christ in my life. The last year has been, far, uh, has been, has been by far the hardest time in my life, but God has used that situation for his glory and to draw me to him. Now with Christ, I have a hope and I can say he is so, so good. Come on, man, yeah, yeah. Nate, it's been an honor getting to know you. Uh, it's been awesome just watching what God's done in your heart through his word, taking quite literally what was broken and lost and, and transform it and now you are found. Um, never giving up, a man that trusts God no matter what's going on and, and not running away from the truth of situations, even yeah. no matter how hard it is. Um, so encouraging. Now sharing the gospel with neighbors, reaching out in boldness. Come on. So encouraging. Mm. So with that, Nate, do you desire to follow Christ for the rest of your days? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, then with that, Let's get it. I baptize you in the uh, name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in the beauty of Yeah! Let's go. Let's bring Luke to the tank. Come on, Luke. Let's go, Luke. We're testing our height limits here, brother. Come on in, come on in, yeah, yeah. Luke says, I was born in a Christian family and I went to church growing up, but I never grew close to God in my childhood years. I had anger problems, was rebellious against my parents, and I was a jerk to people. Over these past years, I really struggled with mental health issues, and it made me question why such a God would do this to me. I resented God and had nothing to do with Christianity. It wasn't until early 2023, when I was struggling with anxiety, when I was flying on a particular model Boeing plane, which was grounded after two fatal plane crashes, and I was scared that it would happen to me. It was during that flight when in my notes app, I typed my confession to God. I slowly but surely started to grow my true relationship with Christ. Although I'll never be perfect, but I'm going to continuously grow my relationship with Christ and grow to better myself. Praise God, man. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Luke, it's amazing to hear your testimony. And uh, for those of you who don't know Luke, this guy, as far as I know, has never known a stranger. And I am so excited to see what God is going to do with you as you love people, as you pursue people, as you welcome people. Uh, the spirit of Christ in you is gonna do wonderful things. And Luke, today you have been adopted as a son. God loves you and sees you according to the righteousness of his son. I'm so excited to see what God's gonna do with you. So Luke, do you confess Jesus as your Lord and express your desire to follow him all the days of your life? You bet I do. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> then I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in likeness of his death and raised with him in likeness of life. Yeah! Let's go, Jack! Let's bring Jack to the tent! Come on! Come on in, Jack! Yeah, bro. Yeah. Here's Jack's story. I grew up as a Lutheran, went to church every Sunday with my family. I felt like in the beginning it was something that I was a force to come to. At my church, I was baptized when I was a baby, but in later years, I did confirmation class. I thought, I thought it was good. It just took me a while to realize 1 John 4, 7 and 9. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. You cannot love God if you do not fully know him. Recently, 
I, 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 I like to run since the Lord uh, gave me the gift to do that and I had an identity crisis because I did not know what to do since I was not able to do what I loved doing. I was out for a while and I felt like I had lost my identity, but it made me realize that I have identity in Him and not in a hobby. I have joy from Him. Yeah, Jack, let's go. Let's get stuff, brother. Jack, I think the very first time you came to Lot Family, without being asked, you went into the kitchen and started cleaning all our dishes. I see in you the character of Christ, who on the night in which he was gonna be betrayed, he kneeled down and washed the feet of his disciples. I'm so thankful to get to be a part of what God is doing in your life. Yeah. So Luke, do you confess Jesus is your Lord and Savior and express your desire to follow him all the days of your life? Yeah, man, let's go, bro. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in likeness of his death, raised with him in newness of life. Let's bring Noah to the tank. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, man. Yeah. It's nice and warm for you, brother. For a long time, I questioned why I needed to get baptized if baptism doesn't save you. For a long time, I thought it was about me where my heart was and what I was doing. God led me to Ephesians 2, 4 to 10. But God being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Noah says baptism is about worshiping God for what he has done for us. So to God be the glory. Yeah, man, let's go. <laughs> Young men passionate about the honor of the Lord. Young men whose hearts have been shaped by the gospel. Young men infiltrated with the Holy Spirit. Noah, I celebrate what God's doing in your life, brother. So do you desire, in front of this body, before the Lord, do you desire to be a disciple of his all the days of your life? Is that your desire? Yes. Come on, man. Then Noah, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in the likeness of his death, and raised to walk a new way of life. Yeah! Hey, let's bring Cosette to the tank. Let's go! Yeah. When I was younger, I grew up in the church, but I never knew what it was like to have my own faith. I soon got diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. I started to take medicine, thinking it would fix things, but it didn't. So I would try things that led me down the wrong path of many different addictions. I would find my worth in what guys thought of me. So I would put a lot of my focus into how I looked. I would feel guilty after uh, every meal I ate. So I would starve myself and continue to do many other things that I never thought I would do because I was insecure in who I was and I was trying to find comfort from the anxiety. But it would only temporarily relieve me from the pain. When seeking worldly comfort failed, I began to, to stop believing in God and attempted to take my own life. Last year in the midst of my pain, I went to camp even though I didn't wanna go. But as I went, I heard the truth. I found my faith and I was saved now I find my worth in the Lord. Despite still struggling, he freed me from the guilt and weight of anxiety and addiction. I'm now living my life for Christ, knowing he loves me, and I am living proof of a loving God. Come on, amen, amen. Cosette, I am so proud of the young woman of God that you are today. When I first met you in middle school, you had no desire to come to anything youth related and you were just there because it was the right thing to do and that's what you were going to do. But the young woman who sits before me today is nowhere near that girl. You have been completely transformed by the Lord and he's just taken a grasp of your life and I've gotten to witness firsthand miracle after miracle that the Lord has had in your life. And I remember the night you got saved, I sat with you and I looked you in the eyes and I said, you know what, this is not gonna make your life and he easier, Cosette, and are you sure you still wanna follow the Lord? And you said, I know, and I've gotten to see you 
whenever yeah. that's been the reality of your life, I've gotten to see you run to the Lord in complete desperation of Him because that you've been called child of God and you've been called by name by our Heavenly Father who has redeemed and restored yeah. you. And I love you so much and I'm just so proud of who you are today. So with that being said, are you ready to declare that you are following the Lord for the rest of your life and you're no longer living for your own life? Yes. All right. Let's go. Come on, come so, with that being said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, buried with Him in the likeness of His death and raised. Yeah. Let's go, CJ. Let's go, CJ. Get up in here. Come on, man. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. I grew up in a Christian household and I've gone to a Christian school since kindergarten. My school was having a camp for the fifth and sixth graders, and every night, we would have a little chapel. On the last night of camp after the service, uh, that night I accepted Jesus into my life. A year after, I fell deeply into sin, constantly repeating the same sin almost every night. I was so ashamed of myself, telling myself I was all alone in this world and that Jesus would never forgive me. Then I heard my brother's story at his baptism, hearing how he was going through the same sin as me and was forgiven. It changed my life. I have been freed from my sin and want to take the next step by being baptized, showing an outward expression of an inward change. Yeah, bro, come on, man. Beautiful. So as your dad watching you grow up, super proud and all the glory to God because I can take credit for all the bad stuff in your life, but God takes all the glory and all the credit for all the good stuff in your life. Scripture tells you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it's not a one-time thing. Hey, I said yes to Jesus, and I'm done. No, it's a continuous inflow of God's word that grows in you and produces fruit, right? Yeah. Proverbs says, train a child up in the way he, he, he should go. And when he gets old, he won't depart from it. So when they do it when they're young, such a blessing. So I thank you. I am pleased with you. Yeah. So, ready to commit your life to Jesus from now to the end. What do you say to that? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in his likeness of death, raise the life of Christ. Yeah. Let's go, Val. Yeah. Get up in here. Let's go. Come on, bring Val up. All right, this, this is special in a lot of different ways, all right? You got, you got family right now watching from literally all over the world. So can you just tell me the countries that are watching right now, watching this baptism? Well, there's people from Venezuela, Chile, um, Spain, Colombia, Argentina. Come on, man. So to all of you tonight, welcome. Here's Val's testimony. In Philippians 1.21, the Apostle Paul said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I could tell you all about my struggles and the darkness that I was in before I knew Christ. But I would like to take this time to put the crown on the one and only true King and Savior of my life. He saw me in my lowest moment and brought me out of the dominion of deep darkness when I had no desire to live or to allow God to have control of my life. But Jesus comforted me in times of doubt and desperation and adopted me into his family. Even before I knew him, he loved me and showed me mercy despite his, uh, his undeniable painful death on the cross. And how great is he that while I was a sinner, he calls me by name and reminds me that I am his every single day. Jesus Christ was and is and will always be the true definition of a loving father, a loyal friend, a powerful Lord and Savior, and the only reason why I am here before all of you today to declare that the only work because of Jesus is because of Jesus Christ in me. The old has passed away and the new has come. Let's go. Yeah. So, so now, now, now so your family watching can understand. Let's go, bring, bring that down, come on. So we'll translate her testimony. So, in Filipenses 1.21, el apóstol Pablo dijo, Para mí el vivir es Cristo y el morir es ganancia. Podría contarles todo sobre mis luchas y la oscuridad en la que me encontraba antes de conocer a Cristo. 
Pero me gustaría aprovechar este tiempo Para poner la corona al único verdadero rey y salvador de mi vida Jesús me vio en mi momento más bajo Y me sacó del dominio de las tinieblas Cuando no tenía ningún deseo de vivir Ni permitir que Dios tuviera el control de mi vida Aunque soy una pecadora Él me llama por mi nombre Y me recuerda de que soy suya todos los días Jesucristo me dio acceso a una relación con un Padre amoroso Ha sido para mí un amigo leal Y un poderoso Señor y Salvador Él es la única razón por la que digo ante todos ustedes Que lo viejo ha pasado y ha llegado lo nuevo Ah, my sweet friend Val, just yesterday you told me, I know I'm not here to live for my purposes, I'm here to live for the purpose of God. And I have had the most incredible journey this past year, journeying with you and watching Christ transform your heart to understand and to live truths like that. I'm so proud of you. So Val, before your family, your friends, this church body, Are you declaring that Jesus is indeed your Lord and Savior and you plan to follow him all the days of your life? Yeah. Awesome. So I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in the likeness of his death and raised to walk. Yeah. Let's go, Victoria. Let's go, Victoria. Come on up. Yeah. Come on in. It's balmy. We're good, we're good, we're good. There we go. Here's Victoria's story. I grew up going to church and learning about God. I gave my life to Christ when I was 11 and rededicated my life when I was 19. Within the past year, the Lord has shown me all that he has brought me through and healed my brokenness. I, I feel called to walk in obedience and be baptized. God has been so good to me, so kind to me, Victoria said. Let's give it up for that, man. Praise God. <laughs> Victoria, getting to, to chat with you and hear and see your zeal for the Lord. Uh, I see a young woman who's captured by his mercy and grace and a young woman that desires to make much of the Lord in all that she does. The scripture says, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And I see that longing in your heart. So my friend, you desire in front of all these people, your friends, family, the crew, you desire in front of them and before the Lord to say that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. Is that your desire tonight? Come on, Victoria. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, buried with him in the likeness of death and raised to walk a new way of life. Yeah!